Welcome to the re weekly recap on the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. We can now say with certainty that inventory is climbing steadily as we head into fall. And you'll see when I share the numbers with you, it's not because, again, that we're getting a lot of new listings. It's because sales volume is so low that the gap between new listings and new contracts is low enough. The gap is high enough to where the inventory keeps piling up. It's not bleak if you're looking at selling. In fact, most of you that have your homes listed are probably somewhat surprised that uh, you're getting the offers that you are, um, especially in the higher price points. That market is not slowing down at all. But we are seeing, uh, here's a daily look at active listings in our market. And you can see that graph is not going down and it tends to go up in the fall anyway. So we're not being disappointed with that. And what's what we're waiting for, which I think is not going to be much of a burst in sales activity is interest rates right now on an average on this survey, 6.14%. But as I've said before, when rates are going down, there's optimism that rates are going to go down further. And so people are going to watch from the sidelines. And that's what we're seeing. I'm seeing on the seven-day moving average that we're still sitting there at about 2,500. It's not budging. And the interest rate is not low enough to get people to, to jump in. They're sitting at 6.1 now and go, wow, imagine how great January is going to look. It's exactly what's going on right now. And, of course, there is the hope that we're going to see home prices coming down. But as we look at the numbers, we're not seeing any data that's showing that that's happening across the board. It is in some areas. And we are seeing some closeout prices in some of the new build communities because their year end is not at the end of December. It's usually October 1st. So if you are looking at new builds, I suggest you get kind of serious right now and pay attention. We've seen some offering 3.9.9% rates for the whole term and offering unbelievable discounts and incentives. So get a hold of us if you're looking for new builds. Uh, I know Ruby out in the West End, she said she's her email's filling up and Jessica's pretty busy with new builds as well. So that's where the party is. And it's kind of reflected here when we look at the, the Crawford Market Index. Maricopa is now officially at the bottom as a definite buyer's market because there's all this new building going on there. And it's it's hard to resell a home. And this is pretty much a measurement of the resale market. 67.6, .6, anything below 100 is considered a buyer's market. And they have done that there. You got Queen Creek, Buckeye, and Maricopa all down in the basement. Fountain Hills is leading the pack. Remember when Chandler used to have a CMI of 500 and something back during the silly season of 2021? Well, they dropped 11% in a week. They're down to 139 a lot of jitters in Chandler as they're waiting to see if the announced layoffs for Intel is going to affect the Chandler plant. They're saying they're going to reduce by 15%, but it doesn't mean they're going to be 15% everywhere. I did talk to a lady that uh, came to an open house that works at Intel, and I asked her about that. She said, well, there's a lot of voluntary layoffs going now. People are leaving, um, either retiring early or take voluntarily taking packages. She goes in the forced layoffs will come after that. So there is some job losses going on in Intel. So we will see, here's our active listings. You can see that it's going up and it is below 2022 levels, but it's following right along. And you can see that's what happens seasonally. This is 2020 and 2021. We can never look at those charts again and count that as normal. So there was no seasonality during those two years, but you can see that there was here in 2023 and 2022. And we're following that same upward pattern in listings again, as I screw up the chart. Now, <clears throat> here's an interesting one from, uh, this is called um, calculated real estate, something like that. I apologize if I messed that up, but you can see that in Phoenix here, this shows our listings at 18,000 up 56% versus last year and up 37 pre pandemic. We're measuring it against 2019 before things went nuts. So we're up 37% versus that year, but up 56% last year. But here's the kind of behind the data. Look at the new listings here. If you look at Phoenix again, we're only up 11.6% versus 2019 
versus last year in new listings and 8.7% pre-pandemic. So what that is telling you is that new listings are only up 87%, but active listings on the market are up 57%. Why? Because there aren't enough buyers to gobble up the new listings that are coming on. We're not getting a flood of new listings on the market, and it's, it is showing. Um, closed sales. If we look at this, you can see here in Phoenix that we had 5,612 in August. That's down 8.2% versus last year. But as I just said, sales are so low, they're down 35.7% versus 2019. Real estate was kind of humming along even before the silly season of 20 and 21. And you can see that we're well below that. Now, on the 18th, the central bank meets. They're going to decide whether they're going to go down 0.25 or 0.50. And uh, you can bet the mortgage rates are going to stay the same or they're going to possibly go up. So don't get caught up in the I'm waiting to see what the central bank does if you're looking at locking your loan. If you're working with a lender right now, talk to them. Say, you know, when do I want to lock in this rate? And because uh, I don't see, even with the announcement, that anything goes down. Now, they're going to have a lot of Fed speak. So they're going to pay attention more to what they say versus what they do this time. They're really concentrating on the job numbers now, where before it was all about the consumer price index. They feel like they've, they're gaining control over that. So now they're looking at the jobs numbers. They don't want to create a lot of high unemployment and a, possibly a painful recession trying to work straight a soft landing. So they're going to say things like, we anticipate another cut in November. We anticipate another cut in December and kind of give you an indication of those cuts. And if they do give an indication that the cuts are larger than what the bond market has been anticipating, then you could see rates come down. But they're not going to come down on the initial announcement of a 0.25 or a 0.50. So it's going to be all ears on what Chairman Powell says after he announces a rate cut. Looking forward, we think we're well in the, we're in a good position to do this, this, and this. Bond traders are going to take that with a grain of salt and say, well, okay, um, probably a 80% probability of a rate cut in November, so let's go ahead and uh, go there now. It's a complicated business, this whole bond market stuff. So those are the numbers you're going to want to watch closely if you're really concentrating on rates. For those that are waiting for prices to come down, you can see the areas where they are going down. That's Buckeye, Maricopa, and Queen Creek. Um, it's not going down in the high-end custom homes. That is not coming down. Um, so we're seeing it in the 500 to 800,000 price range. 400 to 800,000 price range is where we're seeing some pretty significant adjustments in listing prices in those areas. We're not seeing it Chandler, Gilbert. Fountain Hills, et cetera, and especially not in Scottsdale. So I hope you have a great week this week, and I will see you hopefully live Monday morning at 8.30. Take care.